Hi, I'm Susan Nyland with the TBI. Josh Devine is here with me. We are both public information officers with the TBI. And we wanted to give you a, an example today of some of these IRS scam calls that we've been hearing people have been receiving. They don't stop with just citizens. We got one here at our office at the TBI. Exactly. So my phone rang earlier this week, and so we decided that we would record that phone conversation not to make fun of this guy, although we make a little bit of fun of this guy. But the reality is, is we just want people to be able to hear what these calls sound like, because I think we see a lot of press coverage of these calls and to be on alert, but we rarely hear how these conversations play out. So we recorded the conversation, so take a listen, and hopefully this is helpful so you know how to best protect you and your family. And you have reached to the IRS Internal Revenue Service, and you are talking to Officer Kevin Felton, all right? And let me go further and let you know why we have given a call to you. Before that, can you provide me the uh, first and last name of yours? It's Jack, J-A-C-K, and my last name is Smith, S-M-I-T-H. Jack Smith, all right. And is there any middle initial name you have, sir? Middle initial? <clears throat> Sorry? A middle initial? Yeah. I have two. It's actually R and P. Okay, all right. Just bear with me. And can I have the mailing address? Sure. It's 123 Main Street. Then? It's in Nashville, Tennessee, 37216. All right, I'm repeating it back to you. It's 123 Main Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37216, right? Yep. I think the street address which you gave me is not complete or it's not correct. <clears throat> Oh. Well, that's my address. I get mail there every day. 123 Main Street. All right. In Nashville. So, let me try one more time. And is there any apartment number you have? No. All right. Bear with me, sir. All right. Okay. Can you help me with your social number, the last four, or the entire, whichever you like? No, I'm not going to give you my social security number. Is this some sort of scam? Sorry? Is this some sort of scam? I've always been told that if someone asks for your social security number, it's a scam. No, 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 sir. You're, you're taking me wrong, okay? I'm just asking the last four of your social, all right? And I'm not here to prove myself what I am, okay? If you believe me, trust me, just be with me. Or else you can hang up the call, and if there was against you, I won't be able to let you know. Then you will be facing the consequences in the courthouse, into the jail, wherever, you know, they're going to take you. Thank you so much for being on the line. Have a good one. All right? Oh. Uh. Okay, well, if you have information about me, you should know what my social security number is. I don't know why I got to tell you. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to pull up your file with that, okay? I'm not saying that we I don't, we don't have that, okay? Well, you guys told me. To you said file. I owe you money. I mean, certainly you got to know what my deal is, right? <sighs> okay, can you help me with your data port? February 16th, 1979. All right, bear with me. Oh, I got your details, all right. And do you have a pen and paper? Yeah, I do. Just write it down, my name. My name is Officer Kevin Felton. Okay, Officer what? Kevin Felton. K-E-V-I-N. And how do you spell your last name, Kevin? Felton. F-E-L-T-O-N. Felton. Got it. 
Now write down my badge ID. It's IRS 3259. 3259. Great. And now you have to write down the very important thing, which is your case ID, which is in front of me. It's CPK3259. CPK3259. 3259. Hello? Hello? 3259. No, no, uh, that was my badge ID. The case ID is CPK3162. 3162, okay. Yeah. And what's this case about? Do I owe some money somewhere? Yes, sir, as I'm checking the details here, there is a lawsuit being filed against you for the matter of tax evasion. And also there is a non-bailable arrest warrant issued in your name by the Internal Revenue Service. And IRS is ready to go and mark a lien on your assets to uh, recover the amount which you owe to the IRS, which is $6,235. $6,235? I'm sorry? $6,235? That's correct, sir. That's a lot. I don't understand how I owe that much in back taxes. All right, sir. I will let you know. Okay, else, you know that IRS conducts audit every five years. You know the same thing happened again. IRS conducted an audit from 2011 to 2016 and found that there was some miscalculation error has been occurred while you're doing the taxes. The taxes which you did was not correct. That's the reason there is some outstanding tax liability along with the penalty and the late fees which you owe to the IRS. And the actual capital bad taxes is $4,235. And including the late fees and the penalty, it became $6,235. Oh, okay. Okay. So now, before we go ahead and take a legal action against you, before we go ahead and mark a lien on your receipts, seize your property, freeze your account, and um, your passport, your driving license. I don't have a so passport. Before we, do that, before we do that, IRS is giving you two options to take care of the situation. The number one, either you can resolve the case by using the OOCR certificate that is called out of court restitution certificate. That means you can resolve the case out of the court without facing any legal hassle against you. And the second option you have get arrested and defend into the court defend yourself into the court house. Now what do you want to do, sir? So my option wait. So you're saying my options are to do this OOCR thing or get arrested? Yeah. Oh. If I choose get arrested, what's that look like? Arrested? I mean, the second option, right? Yeah, like if I choose that, what's that look like? Are you going to come get me at a certain day and time or what? Because I, yeah, I don't have no $6,600 to pay you today. No, 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 no. No, we are not saying that you have to pay the entire amount right now. You just have to pay some amount... Oh, well, that's so nice of y'all. I'm saying that you don't have to pay the enti entire amount right now, okay? You just have to pay some amount in order to cancel the arrest warrant and drop the case. Oh. And the rest of the amount will put you on payment plan, like monthly payment plan, okay? A monthly payment plan, okay. Yeah. So now you, uh, you asked me that the second option, how it looks like. So I will let you know that... If you take this matter to the goat house, then first of all, I will need to execute your non bailable arrest warrant to the local sheriff department. They will come within an hour. They will mark a lien on your assets. They will arrest you. You will be kept in custody for 72 hours. Then after, they will present you in the goat house. And if you're found guilty in the goat house, the judge will ask you to pay a swing amount of approximately forty to $45,000 including the penning taxes, penalty, late fees, compounded interest, attorney fees, and the court fees.
If you don't pay that amount, then the judge may send you in prison up to five years. Five right? years? Holy That's cow. How it looks like, yeah. And now you can go with any option. You have both the options. You have both the options available. Now you can let me know what you want to do, sir. Whether you want to resolve the case with me right now or you want to get arrested or defend yourself into the courthouse. So I've got to make a decision right now? That's correct, sir. As we are on automatic system, our system is designed such a way. Once you get connect, once you get connected with us, and if you disconnect the line without uh, resolving the case, then one confirmation will pop up in my system. We'll ask whether the case has been resolved. All right. So, like a total bonehead, I accidentally disconnected the call as opposed to hitting mute. Really, I was trying to figure out what, what we else should we say. say there. Yeah. So. Fortunately enough, he called back. So did you disconnect the line intentionally or? Well, how did you get my callback number? So your callback number pops on when you call us. Oh, okay. Did All you right. look and see where I'm, where you called me at? I, I, I got you. I intention what you want to do. Okay, no problem. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to execute your... Order. Okay, here's the deal. Call. Here's the deal, sir. Yeah? If you would have looked at the number you called, you would have realized that you called the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, sir. I very much work for a legitimate law enforcement agency, and you, sir, are a scam. Hello, Kevin? You there, Kevin? Hello, hello. Yeah, Kevin, yeah, you there? I'm here. Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Did you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. There was a lady beside you, I think, right? Yeah, my friend Susan. She's been recording this entire phone conversation. <laughs> and how is she? Um, I hope she's. <laughs> I'm coming to see that. I'm coming to. See so, as you can tell, the conversation didn't end so well, but we got a good laugh out of it. We did. And more importantly, we wanted to give an experience of what it actually sounds like to interact with some of these folks. And even when you give them some answers that you think are going to maybe stop them dead in their tracks, they have some other way to recover and still try to get the information that they're looking for. So that's something to be careful of. Really, you shouldn't engage them at all. But we just wanted to give you an example of what it, kind of information it is that they're looking for. And fortunately enough, the IRS actually put out some great reminders just a few days ago. So let's run through those with you so you know exactly what to keep in mind. So according to the IRS, they will never call to demand immediate payment over the phone, nor will the agency call about taxes owed without first having mailed you several bills. They also will not call or email you to verify your identity by asking for personal and financial information. Furthermore, they're never going to demand that you pay taxes without giving you the opportunity to question or appeal the amount they say you owe. The IRS will not require you to use a specific payment method for your taxes, such as a prepaid debit card. They will also never ask for credit or debit card numbers over the phone or via email. Also, the IRS will never threaten to immediately bring in local police or other law enforcement groups to have you arrested for not paying. So if you do get a phone call from someone claiming to be from the IRS and asking for money or to verify your identity, here's what you should do. Do not give out any information. Hang up immediately and contact the IRS Impersonation Scam Reporting webpage. You can also call one 800 366 4484. Alternatively, you can report the situation to the Federal Trade Commission on ftc.gov. In your correspondence, please add IRS telephone scam in the notes so they'll know what you're talking about. So all that to say, we hope that this has been helpful. We hope that you're able to protect you and your family, and we hope that you do not fall victim. We don't want to see anyone in our state or anyone out there, period, fall victim to one of these scammers. So be on alert, share this video with your friends, and as always, thank you for following us here on social media. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.